She was the first woman film director. Specifically, she was the first woman to make fiction films. Alice Guy Blachet was directing films before women had the right to vote. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Alice Guy Blachet Show. My name is William Evans. I'm Audrey Bass. And every week we, or every two weeks, or every three weeks, or whenever we feel like it, pretty much at this point, <laughs> we'll probably get back on regular schedule in January. But every week we we try to discuss a, a new female film director release or an old one, a classic film, uh, just for uh, the so we can better educate ourselves and our audience about women in cinema. Yeah, they don't really right now do a good job of like marketing female movies i know like uh so it's good to just like try and expose yourself to it uh so that's why we do it right um uh yeah let's just jump right into it we saw uh two short films this week and we saw a a feature length film Uh, yeah i'm sorry just the edge of 17 which is i believe the only the last uh major female directed release of the year what about that Underworld movie that comes out in December? I think it comes out in January, but it might. Oh, maybe it does. Yeah, I'm not sure, but <laughs> but anyway, it's still sad. <laughs> Regardless, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, it's if it is the last one of the year, at least it was a great one. Yeah, it was, and we will definitely get to it. Uh, but first, we want to talk about the uh, what I've seen and what Audrey's seen, or. Or just general topics, I guess. Uh, there's also the uh, 52 Women Challenge. I, I wanted to bring up that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, That sounded really interesting. We'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, yeah. Um, so, but first, I uh, I watched uh, Gilmore Girls, A Year in the Life. I've just, first mm-hmm. episode, Audrey is totally not interested in this at all. I, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Like, it's, look, I, maybe I'll get into it later. Right. Uh, I'm, like, not discounting that. Like, mm-hmm. if it's all on Netflix... One of these days, I'm gonna end up. It'll uh, you. Nobody will see me for like two or three weeks, and mm-hmm. I'll just be like, I've seen it all. <laughs> I've seen things. I I I I've saw some reviews on it on uh, Letterboxd, and I I do see mm-hmm. that there's some people who really like hate these people, like just hate the show and everything. And it's it's very much like, it's it's not a show. I would say it's kind of a show that's a little bit dated for its times now because it's. It's a very much a, a, a show about waspy white people in the Northeast. And that is like a, a either love it or hate it. And it's a very like small town of waspy white people and uh, and how they're they're very, um, you know, kind of cynical and, and weird and, and quirky and funny, uh, really quirky, I think, in like a genuine sense like to the word it's not like a like a trying to be quirky it's just like these characters are some of them are insane and weird and some of them are just funny and it's it's very uh it's very much a con- it's kind of like a conservative liberal show i don't know how that re- like how i would define it what what do you mean by conservative liberal like there is it is there some kind of like politics it's it? not like politically conservative but it's like it's like white people. Later. <laughs> Sorry, that's my family saying they're leaving. Yeah, we're. This is a a ramshackle podcast. So, someday we'll be in a studio for sure, <laughs> talking about this stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, like, let's see, one day, yeah, like, that's that's gonna happen one day. Well, <laughs> one day we will have just a studio. Actually, there's we could have a studio. Yeah. We'll have a studio. We might do a revival after we make it in our careers and everything. Anyway, yes. um, but yeah, uh, Gilmore Girls. I don't know how to explain it, but you like it. You I do it. You like it. I dig it. I like it. I, I there's really fast it's... dialogue and they're snappy and there's super pop culture references and I was kind of doing it at the same time Family Guy was doing it, but they don't they don't do it in like the cutaway sense. They're just always like their their dialogue is just so like they just have a lot of one liners. Yeah, about, like that's exactly. cool. That's fu- I mean, like honestly, like it does sound pretty fun. But yeah. like, yeah, no, I just have not seen any of it and have never had any interest in watching right, it right. up until, yeah, no. The big realization for me is that these the two central uh, female characters are pretty horrible people. Like Rory, oh, I like that. <laughs> Rory is uh, in the first episode. Spoilers, but I'm just gonna go into it. Is that she's they have this running gag where she has this boyfriend that 
she's cheating on him with like this guy from like past seasons but every th- like her and Lorelai which is her mother uh, they they keep forgetting that he exists. So kind of like Anne in Arrested Development, okay. like her, you know, like everyone doesn't really know her name, but they keep forgetting he exists and they keep like leaving him at places and, <laughs> and everything. And he's always trying to like catch up with them. So it's what, what year was Gilmore Girls? It's Gilmore from Girls. I feel like it was like what, like 2000 to 2007. Yeah. 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 I remember like around that age like hearing about it and seeing ads and yeah never at one point thinking i should watch that it was a real butt of a joke for a long time like i i said last week like there's like but there's lines of you know like you'd see uh how to be a good boyfriend you know and there would be coupons like watch an episode of gilmore girls instead of the game you know and for like and i, I just like this kind of weird like backhanded sexist thing where like gilmore girls is only for girls you know but if you live like like you know like me i am um, my dad was you know, a pilot so when he was gone it was usually my mom and sister that would you know hog the tv or whatever but mm-hmm. and they watched gilmore girls and i just subtle you know like started watching it too and it's just a, a really enjoyable, bizarre little show. Uh, and yeah, and then uh, the other bad thing that Lorelai does, I guess, is she, her father dies, and she can only think of really bad, like means, like bad stories that, about her father. When her mom's like, "Hey, let's all tell a story about our father," you know, about, about this guy. And uh, yeah, it, it's just kind of weird. Like she just comes up with like only negative things to say. And like the guy was in the past episodes, like really cool guy so it, it was interesting but <laughs> but yeah funny, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a I, it's a peculiar show and the revival definitely you see some datedness but in general I, I i enjoy it so cool yeah yeah i mean i remember there's there's nothing uh, w- while that was going on the the one show that i liked that was like really like a female centric mm-hmm. one I'm, i just like I pulled out this uh, this cabinet that's filled with all my DVDs, and I've just been staring at them the whole time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see Thirty Rock over there. Yeah, I remember that? Like, did you watch that? Yeah, I did. I watched like the first three seasons and kind of dropped off, but I love Thirty Rock. It oh, was in. It was great, right? Yeah, yeah. Those first two seasons, especially, are like hit after hit after hit after. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, God, like I. That's one of those shows. Like, I'm sure, girl. Gilmore Girls is like that for a lot of people mm-hmm. where it's like you can just turn it on and like fall asleep watching it because you've seen it like a million times. It's like a great show to fall asleep to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your favorite episode of 30 Rock? Oh, um, I mean, like I have a couple of favorites. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like even so, like for those, I mean, like most, I'm sure most of the people listening to this are just people that we know, you know? Mm-hmm. So like they all know that I'm a trans woman. And look, I may like on some level as a trans person, it's kind of like super offensive. Uh, Jenna's boyfriend later. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Uh, my, I, Will I... Forte is uh, her boyfriend, mm. who's a Jenna Maroney impersonator. And like, there's all these like really kind of like fucked up trans jokes, <laughs> but they're all so goddamn funny. Like, I can't help it. Like, yeah. And uh, so the episode where they introduce him is like one of my favorites. Um, I love. Uh, I faintly uh, remember this, like very vaguely, but yeah, go on. I love the episode where she gets foot surgery. I think that one's like fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, the episode where she and Jack are married is good too. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, God, like there's like just an infinite amount of great episodes. Seinfeld Vision's a great episode. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Um, I remember uh, my favorite moment. I think is well, there's two favorite moments where uh, Tina Fey meets uh, Liz meets uh, Carrie Fisher's character. Oh yeah, 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 yeah that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh you know what there's this one moment i just like love to death uh there's this moment where she meets buzz aldrin mm-hmm. and uh buzz is like look you know like you don't want to end up like buzz aldrin you know <laughs> yeah. like tells this whole long story and she's like making some it's like some boyfriend thing mm-hmm. again but there's just like at the end she's like she gets her big revelation and buzz aldrin is like would you like to scream at the moon with buzz aldrin <laughs> and she's just like i really would and they just start screaming at the moon that's and great it, it's i was dying i thought that that was like one of my favorite moments in the i really thing. need to revisit 30 rock jesus 
I know it's all in CISO for sure. Like everything now. We don't need DVDs and like looking at yeah, that. Yeah, it's just... honestly like I the only reason I have it is because Amoeba would not buy it for me. Oh. They were just like, yeah, nobody wants DVDs anymore. Like we don't nobody wants this 30 rock DVD. We'll give you a nickel for it and mm -hmm. I'm like yeah, no, I, I guess I'll just take these DVDs yeah, yeah, exactly. and leave them to rot in my room for <laughs> ever yeah. as I watch it on Netflix. Right, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, um, so want to move on to uh, short films, I guess? Yeah. Okay, so each of us picked a short film from in the uh, early career of two great directors. I picked uh, Chantal Ackerman's La Chambre, uh, which is like, I, I don't know if it's her first film, but it's like an early film for her. Right. And then you pick. I picked uh, Jane Campion's Peel and Exercise and Discipline. Yeah. And uh, so I guess uh, we saw La Chambre first. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll talk about that exactly. first. Um, I picked this one just because it's really early. And like, I'll just be honest with you. My room is a shithole. And that whole movie is just about how Chantal Ackerman also lives in a shithole. <laughs> so I'm just, I like that. I can identify with Chantal Ackerman. It actually tells like a decently complex story within 11 minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a very simple setup. It uh, You see this woman's room. The camera pans back and forth across it. And you notice little details every time in the fact that it's like she's looking her things over and over and over again at her dirty, dirty apartment as she cleans an apple. And it's like you get this impression that like there was – like because you see a table and there's mm -hmm. like two cups, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't pick that up. But and yeah. then you know there's a heart in the chair next mm -hmm. to her yeah i saw that yeah and it's like she and it's so it looks like somebody was there but is not there anymore mm -hmm. and it's like she's just mulling things over and over and tells and she and she looks sick you know it looks like she caught the flu or something and it's like so it's just this sick woman is just forced to live in her own filth and just remember the person that's not there and yeah like, yeah yeah so it's like within 11 minutes, it's like very in – it, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like the Family Guy bit where it's like the, the clown is flipping the pancake. Yeah. It yeah. is a little <laughs> bit pretentious, yeah. for sure. But like you're, there's a lot to draw on from it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's like it's really interesting how she took just the most simplest of setups and told like that whole story very quickly. Yeah. And in a non-conventional manner. Yeah. So that, that's what I really appreciated about it. Yeah, for me, it's like Ackerman, um, she really like strips down cinema to its bare essentials. And oh, I yeah. was looking, mm -hmm. I, at times I was just looking at the edge of the frame to like watching it move, you know? So like, oh, it's it's, it's coming to a slow. I use, I sometimes do that in films where like when it's, pan when it's moving forward, you can like notice it's just so slight but it will be moving you know the camera yeah. will be pushing forward and uh it's it's just like an interesting uh like she makes you a well aware of the camera and how it's moving and everything and and it really sets you up for her f her future films where it's very slow and methodical and very uh, -huh. uh attention to detail attention to objects i don't think Ackerman has ever seen a home she doesn't like <laughs> she's like i just like it. i need to watch it like show everything in this room but it's cool i i, I do I, I appreciate her her cinema and her vision immensely uh i i mean at a, at a certain level like a really kind of primal not a primal level but like at a like a i'd actually agree with base uh, a level. lot of ways like primal like because I, I'm just thinking of like Jet to L mm -hmm. where it's like the first 30 minutes is just one frame that doesn't move on a woman in a darkened room. Yeah. Sometimes she eats sugar and sometimes she just sits there. Yeah. yeah. It's so fucking and it's so intense and you cannot help but watch it. Like I remember first watching that on the edge of my seat, yeah, watching yeah. this woman eat sugar, like what the fuck is she going to do? <laughs> what What is this? Where's yeah. this going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's like Ackerman, uh, in a nutshell, I mean, she's she's very uh, she's a very fascinating director. Um, man, I did I didn't really realize the whole the the. I, okay, I have a question. I have seen this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a question though. Like the whole the camera when it stops and goes the other way and then goes back and forth. What do you think about that? Because that was I think like, that that was. Like, was... Fuck, fuck. <laughs> I I think damn. The, if you okay. I'm going to give you two answers. Yeah, I have kind of thoughts. Yeah, pretty Two answers. Yeah. One is that it's like 
there's the circular nature of it mm -hmm. and the fact that it keeps repeating itself in this very right. specific pattern. It's not going in a circle precisely. It's just going back and forth. Mm -hmm. I mean, the objects that it opens and closes on probably have some sort of uh, like, like they incite a memory or something. Mm -hmm. So like something happened there and she's like just thinking about it over and over again. And that's like the one answer. And the second answer, I think it was a technical constraint and she just went with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I was thinking it was trying to like it was it was showing you this entire environment and then trying to like zero in on her and trying to be like she's important or something. I don't I there's like uh, ideas of um there's the Steindahl idea, which by the way, earrings Madame De uh he was a uh Max Fulce was a big uh a reader of Steindahl's work where it's um love is like in in, in love his work you'll find uh, when people are in love, they like circle mm -hmm. each other and stuff like that, or they'll be in like love is very much about like circular movement. So I was thinking about that in here, but I don't know really where I would go with that other than, um, but the, the, maybe the, it, she, she like kind of wakes because she's still, in, oh man, this is really projecting, but she wakes because she's still in love. And then when like the love kind of fades out, she, it, it starts going back and forth and, and whatnot yeah, but no that that's i think that's actually very valid that it's kind of like her shifting psyche yeah she's yeah different things mulling things over you know maybe she goes one way with it maybe she goes another way with right. it and yeah it's i i i really appreciate the uh this movie like i just think it's like re i think it's really good like it shows that like really you really don't need much like it's mm -hmm. not even like godard said like all you need apparently mm -hmm. is a girl in a movie and that's it that's yeah. the only thing you need Audrey, I want to pitch to you really quick. You could do a, a parody of this where, like, <laughs> like it goes around, but, like, I, I don't know. You're doing something different each time. And the, there could be, like, a Moroccan band. Or, 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 like, or, or, I don't know. Or, like, you know, like you're, you're – fighting with somebody and I'll, then you, I'll, I'll remind the listeners like, my room they is just really dirty them, and then you're like <laughs> try to put like a, like a bath of acid and like <laughs> it just keeps going <laughs> please come in. I just and it just keeps going <laughs> I don't know something like that that would be a really funny art no one would get it except for like the five people <laughs> of France Oops, yeah, like the five people in our generation who've actually seen this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, movie. exactly. <laughs> oh, also shout out to the Criterion Collection. That's why I was able to watch this. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, the the next film I believe might be on Criterion, or it might not be, but it's uh, Peel, an exercise in discipline, or an exercise in discipline. Peel, and it's by Jane Campion. It's actually, I think, her first short. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's strong yeah i know how did she get the rights to that music i th i think that's illegal well, like a, there you go yeah she, i Jane know champion don't give a fuck apparently. <laughs> i mean i back in the 80s and in australia she could probably get away with a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> um maybe she didn't even pay the kid uh, you God, don't know <laughs> this was uh this was unexpected i i like because i've seen this for the first time that was an amazing fucking film yeah. like that was so fucking good like I know. <laughs> uh it, oh my god just like 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 i what astounds me is uh and to to the listeners at home you should just watch this thing yeah it's it's hard to really explain and i've seen it a second time and i really can't put like a lot of like thought into like themes of it but i it's just such you know, a were, bizarre tone I, I just want to talk about a couple moments in it that really stood out mm -hmm. to me was like so there's this idea that there's this guy in there who's kind of like – there is a little bit of, like, sexism in the way that, like, he, he tries to be, like, a really strong, like, dominant man, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like, you're going to do things my fucking way. Tells the kid, you're going to do things my fucking way. The kid starts to do things like that. Goes up to the mom, you know, like, later. Yeah. And it's it's like, actually his uh, aunt. It's their brother and oh. sister. Gotcha. Yeah, they they established that in like the triangle in the beginning. That's like a blink and you'll miss it. But oh my god, um, yeah, okay, Fair yeah, enough. yeah. But like, it's still this. Th there was this idea of like, and now the kid like tries to be like the dad and mm -hmm. like be like, you're gonna fucking pick up those orange peels. And I'm like in in my head like, what like orange peels 
like disintegrate over time like there's no reason you can't just throw it out the window mm -hmm. it's good for the environment just throw it out the window right right right. and but it's like so the fact that this guy is so intent on you have to pick it up it's like not about it's just about him having his way yeah like that's that's all that it is right and it's like it's very childish and you know there's a lot there's a, god those there's a lot of like really subtle amazing things going on with this you know? yeah 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 i i i I try to link back the film to like its title and exercise and discipline and and how like it's it is it is uh, I mean I just said that I don't understand it but I think like the like everyone at the end disciplines themselves to not like smack this kid and even the kid kind of disciplines himself not to like go over a line you know at the end but mm. it's still like it, like the you know like the father is not the he's the father to the kid and that the his the other woman is his uh sister and then and, and the aunt um so like him mm -hmm. trying to um you know like him trying to discipline his kid like it, it's mostly the kid runs out after uh to pick up the peels but he runs away a little bit yeah. and like the father is just like i don't know what to do with this kid and uh that's i mean that it reminded me a bit of the babadook too where it's like oh yeah this, this yeah like kind of a brat of a kid right like, he's just like throwing tantrums and yeah. you know hissy fits and shit yeah and it's yeah like, it's just like such a, a a point of view that you don't really see a uh, much uh if, for some reason both babadook and this are australian so maybe it's a, a australian thing to like explore this dynamic between it could be i mean like a, a, apparently adults. it's a part of iranian film cinema to like mm -hmm. like focus on kids because they have like more freedoms and stuff yeah 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 all right, interesting. But anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, what what other moments did you like about this? Oh my god, just like that. Also, just the those close ups, mm -hmm. you know, and like the close up of the eyes, like they they were so uh, they were like fucking piercing. Like it was yeah. amazing. Like those like just like getting on like on like a very like raw emotional level. Like what's going on there? Like they don't have to say anything. It's just like they look, and it's like you see what they are feeling, and like like this woman's just defeated frustration you right know? yeah this woman's just like the strain of anger that she won't like lash out with right it's like you can see it in her like yeah she like so wants to and it's the same thing with the dad where it's just like it's, a, it's different it's a lot more angry you know it's a lot more it's not as defeated but it's still piercing and angry you know mm -hmm. and it's and it's sad too and it's like you know it's uh, like like and then the kids looks of just like confusion and just like doesn't understand and like kind of does understand on like an, a, a raw level but doesn't like get the minutia of it because mm -hmm. like the kid hasn't experienced stuff yet yeah exactly yeah yeah I, I think one of the more striking things for me and uh i i see this in and not only this film but like the next film we're going to talk about edge of 17 and a lot of uh female directed films is that they like men never show uh like people going to the restroom and like that's like or like using you know like peeing or so it was like a very kind of striking thing for this scene this movie i know it's like an uncomfortable thing to talk about but it is like something that that no, you don't really definitely. see in cinema a whole lot it's like the when she when she pees you know like you see like she goes out in the middle and she squats down and and yeah, you and uh, you know you don't see it graphically or anything, but just the fact that they do show that is uh, it's always fascinating to me. What do you think about that? I mean, like I can think of instances where like male directors have had characters like peeing and stuff, but mm -hmm. I do think that there's like there's definitely this thing where like um, that kind of stuff just it's gross to to girls, yeah. but not like as gross to the point where like guys won't talk to each other in the bathroom. Like that's mm -hmm. the thing where it's like girls don't give a fuck about it. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And it's, so it's like this little bit of a thing. Like it's just like uh, one of those, like a lot of times it's like a perceived cultural difference or something mm -hmm. between male culture and female culture. And like, yeah. I don't know, like maybe there's something to it. Maybe it's not, there's not, you I really, know, I think there is, to be honest, I do think they're there. They show it a bit in like male cinema, but uh, you know, but it's not, it's usually for like a funny context. It's not just like something somebody does, you know, like it's it's it, it's never really used for like, oh, well, you know, of course, this character is going to restaurant, you know, like using the restroom. Like, you I know. mean, like I, I, it always seems like a 
maybe to me it just seems like it because I'm a guy. Like it seems like a point to show this, but I don't, I don't know. know. Like I can think of like like there are funny contexts, but then there was like some. I don't know. I think he was like a Thai filmmaker in that one. For those out there, uh, whoever get a chance, like uh, the story of film and Odyssey, it's an excellent documentary. Mm-hmm. You get kind of like a bite of a lot of different filmmakers over the years. Which There's one? like a, a Thai filmmaker, and like he's a guy, and he was all like, uh, he always shows people pissing in his movies. Oh, wow. And he had like a specific answer for it when asked about it. He's like, oh, yeah, that's on purpose because bodies are like the containers of different things like water. So he shows yeah. people he's constantly drinking and then peeing because it's like, oh, your body is what you put into yeah. it, you know? And it's like, it was kind of like a, a play on that. So, I mean, like, there are guys, directors that do it. Yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, I guess maybe. It, 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 there's a lot, there's a, I'll say, like, what you're talking about, the casualness of it. Yeah. The pr- fact that it's just like, this is just something that somebody does. Yeah. It takes away maybe a that's lot of the mystique, it. too, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the casualness here is pretty... Like and I feel like Jane Campion does that a lot in her films. She's very casual about uh, women's sexuality, uh, in- introversion, uh, so, you know, like like problems, uh, like psychology, you know, like uh, various things. Um, w- the connection to nature because Austria is very much like a country, you know, like setting. So it, it's a it's a fascinating Australia in itself. I just want to say it's a fascinating contradiction. All, everyone's speaking British and it's in the country, you know, like, <laughs> like we wouldn't think of like British people living in Alabama, but that's pretty much what Australia is. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, like there, uh, Australia is a great setting. Yeah. Max. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That Nick Rogue movie walkabout. Mm-hmm. I don't really know much about australian cinema to be honest with you <laughs> yeah we'll we'll be watching <laughs> sweetie in the coming weeks for yeah, sure yeah like it's i mean like this is this is amazing mm-hmm. uh, i've seen uh of jane campion's work like i've always wanted to like get into her stuff like i've heard her talk and she's like very very intelligent like she's super smart mm-hmm. i've seen uh, a couple episodes of top of the lake and that it was really good like it's a great show i just didn't continue yeah i will eventually like it's yeah. i love uh um Elizabeth Moss. Yeah, Elizabeth Moss and the Holly Hunter. Peggy I think from so. Mad Men. Yeah. yeah. We need to see the piano for sure. That's. Oh, I, yeah. I've yeah, seen I'll it like see twice, that. and I didn't love it, but I might. I might. I remember both contexts when I saw it. I was like kind of in the shitty mood, so I might. I might be better, but it's it's really lush and beautiful and. Yeah, you know, I mean, amazing. like it. Uh, she had some movie. Like they were showing some clips from this one movie. God, I can't remember the name. It was like this great dance scene in it after a fight and like it was it was really it was really cool mm-hmm. like i i definitely i i would like to see more of her work yeah we'll see more and then it was also the, it was also just the musical cues and the 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 pacing of the yeah. uh, of peel was just phenomenal yeah like yeah. just circling back around to that like it's so i love the way that the music is used in the beginning and mm-hmm. like the beats of like the orange hitting the wall the uh, right the yeah yeah just, like, it really like, she shows like a very confident command of the cinematic form for sure um but yeah I, I one last point on it i think is like both these shorts showed like i i think the the best short films are the ones that are show like a, a voice and a setting yeah and and i i never really grasped that before i always thought maybe it's a message or a point but no i think that's both because the then you want to invest on someone who shows like something very unique yeah. of like a voice in a setting and uh absolutely yeah. like that i mean like that's uh you know like i i experienced that like one time this year mm-hmm. where i when you see like the first work of somebody and it's like wow that's so fucking strong and specific like and it doesn't necessarily have to even be that you like it that that much mm-hmm. although in this case i do it's not really a women's film but like that i know what, that what was it Swiss Army Man. Oh, okay. I, I still think it's like one of the best things of the year. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely need this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit there. I need to do a full catch up on a lot of stuff. So that, I mean, that movie be, just like I kind of can't fucking believe that it exists. <laughs> the the it's the best farting corpse movie of all time. <laughs> the only one. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Anyway, so let's move on to The Edge of Seventeen, directed by. Oh. Uh, no, I was just gonna say, like, an inc- uh, speaking of incredible debuts, actually, right. I did feel it again with this filmmaker. Like, strong fucking movie. Yes, Edge of Seventeen. It's directed by Kelly Fremen Craig or Kelly Fremen. I'm not sure, um, but yeah, it's Edge of Seventeen. So, I guess, what what question do we start off with this movie? 
it's what I I guess like a lot of people would see the trailer and be like, well, this looks like another kind of teen comedy thing. But I guess what what do you think makes it important for today's cinema in in general? Well, I think what's important about it is that like we always need fresh voices. Mm -hmm. We always need uh, people that are taking the new co the new context of the era. You know, right? Like, look, like thing uh, John Hughes movies were amazing in the eighties, and they are still great in a mm -hmm. sense today. But there needs to be, still be movies like that. Like people need to be taking in the new thing. Like uh, w one one line in the movie I thought was particularly emblematic of this thing. You know, mm -hmm. where like uh, there there's this uh, so. The main character is at this party, yeah. and she is just like alone and rejected by everyone. And there's this there's this one chick who's just drinking beers, and she she seems really fucking cool. Yeah. And she's like, "I know you. We go to the same class." And <laughs> yeah. It's like it seems like, oh shit, she, oh she she has a friend now. Yeah. Like this is really nice and sweet. And she's like, "You ever see that movie Twins?" <laughs> or she's like, "What's that one movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito?" And they're like brothers and shit yeah and she's like oh twins oh wait wait sorry the the key part of that was like she's like you know that movie with arnold schwarzenegger and the fat guy from it's always sunny yeah yeah, yeah. oh shit twins yeah, yeah yeah twins you and you and your brother are like that movie <laughs> and it's just like yeah you are the fat guy from always sunny the fact that it's like she doesn't say danny devito she doesn't say like oh the fucking penguin or mm -hmm. you know the actor from cuckoo's nest or whatever they're just yeah. like no, the fat guy from Sunny, like, because it's like that's that's what that's how he's known now. Yeah, that's yeah. how I primarily know uh, Danny DeVito. Like, he's he's the fat guy from It's Always Sunny. So I think that's kind of like that that I, I that joke right there is emblematic of like why this movie's important. Yeah, there's somebody has to be making jokes that appeal to the new era. Right. Exactly. And 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 I think yeah the. Uh, Man, this movie. I what what I really like about it is that they really like they they throw her through the grinder like the protagonist, and that's you know like they like she is already depressed and very egotistical and everything. It reminds you a little bit of Rushmore, where like the you oh, know yeah, so kind of selfish, like a precocious kid, yeah, you know, who's like who is very smart, mm -hmm. but like you know. <laughs> like only thinking about herself and how mm -hmm. everything relates to her and they really make a like the director really like makes you conscious of that fact like how like it'll sometimes leave uh it, it's not totally limited to her perspective so sometimes it'll like she'll leave the scene and you'll see like these people kind of dealing with her kind oh of, yeah that was those are some intense scenes i was thinking particularly yeah. but the ones with her where it focuses on like her brother's perspective because you spend yeah. the whole movie hating her brother. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just like, aw. Yeah. He has feelings too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And they, they, like the brother thing, like they never, I, that's another thing. What the movie avoids doing with the Woody Harrelson character, especially, is like he never really gives a lot of warmth to her. It's through like his like mm -hmm. dialogue. It's always like kind of like the actions, he, you know, he brings her over to his. Um, he, you know, he says, he says like at one point, you're my favorite student, but it never really like, he's like, that just seemed like the right thing to say at the right time. You know, it's always undercutting every single like possible, oh, yeah. you know, like way out for her with like, like sobering, like making her like reflect on her like shitty attitude towards life. So it's, and then the brother, like the brother never flat out says, you know, I don't even think he says, I love you in the climactic you know, moment where like they embrace, which you know, spoilers. But we're going to get into spoilers. Um, uh, yeah, you know. but so so for those out there that don't want to hear any more spoilers, pause. Yeah, watch the movie and come back. Exactly, and please watch the movie because it's it's, it's not doing really right well at the box office either. So, but like one thing that I will say is like a huge strength of the movie is like there's like just like the emotion of it is like strong like it fe it feels like genuine like mm -hmm. it's not like really like trying to pander to anyone right it's just like here's what it is you mm -hmm. know and it's like that or here's what it is for this one character in this yeah. one place and time yeah and I, I i can't help but think of the godard quote where it's like yeah of course everything's always been said uh everything under the sun has already been said uh, only if words never change their meaning and meanings never change their words. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. Oh, wow, that's a great quote. I need to in red, write that down. Yeah, uh, it's a, it is it's, it's my favorite Godard mm -hmm. quote. Uh, I think it totally applies to this movie mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, this is a very 
this story has certainly been done before. Right. The but plot it, even itself, like I looking back, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. I mean, not it, really. We, we could talk a little bit about like I guess her father dies when she's thirteen, which which makes her kind of and her mom, mom, her brother, and her, you know, kind of like in this fragile state. And in this fragile state, she's really good friends with her with this one girl who she met. What a t by the way, what a f touching flashback where the, the like the little girls become friends. Like I I just like mm -hmm. like near cried my you know Aww. because it's so sweet. It's just like I I love seeing girls become friends on cinema and like TV. And it's just like that actually and, was the sweetest thing yeah. ever when like the <laughs> She's like, move, get out of the way. Yeah. And then it's like, but she's really doing it. it, it the, then they show it's like she wants to get water for this little creature on yeah. her finger. And like they totally become friends. And it, it's honestly like it is like genuine and really sweet. Mm -hmm. It's a nice moment. And then her, her friend years later sleeps with her brother. And that's what kind of sets off like the the this chain reaction, chain reaction of bad events for nadine our protagonist um but that yeah if i only have any complaints is like after after that event i never like i i the the friendship between them never really became the focal point again i feel it was more it just went back into like nadine and like her family and everything and it's it's good but i i kind of you know, i wish it, to saw a little bit more of the friend i guess and and feel more like her Mm -hmm. being rounded as a character anyway what i'm sorry no it just it reminded me of francis ha another like very female German yeah. film where it's like the care the, her her best friend is like the first thing that goes wrong yeah, yeah yeah and then it's like it, it, it's she keeps it showing up like at different points in the movie mm -hmm. but it's like she really is not like that much a part of it you right know? Just reminded me of that, like female friendship in film is exactly. like is unique. It is different than male friendship, yeah. and uh, it's it's always like like good to explore that. But it's also like I, I liked seeing this character kind of like the the emotional climax of the movie. I particularly thought was like great. They had this really natural progression of like they had uh, like the whole movie sets this up where it's like she has these various. Uh, confrontations that like come to a head in one day mm -hmm. and just like push her over the edge. Like she goes through her a one day of nonstop horrible bullshit yeah. that's been building up for like three months. Yeah. I think one of it is she, she steals the car after her mom and a confrontation. She texts this guy who's like, what a great little bit <laughs> yeah. uh, though. Like from the, in the beginning of the movie, the characters are shown like as kids being kicked out of the car to go. To school. Oh yeah, that's one true. kid goes goes to school. The other kid, our main character, is just like, no, I don't want to go to school. Fuck, mm. I don't want to go to school. Yeah. <laughs> and they have a whole fight about it. And like at the beginning of the climax, is she's like, I'm not getting out of the car. Mm. And she's like, you can go fuck yourself is what you could do. Yeah. The mom is like that. Too. Like a nice little yeah. like that plot point came around. Yeah. And it's like the her not having a car came around. And yeah. It's like then it, her taking the car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Her, her taking the car. Like, like they had all these, like, great little uh, things that they had set up. Like, the whole thing with, mm -hmm. like, the guy she's interested in, too. Like, the way they were te teasing that throughout the whole movie. I just think that, like, that was just such a well-done climax to, like, really push a character to their emotional edge. Yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. And uh, I just thought it was a really great, solid movie. Like, I laughed. I thought mm -hmm. it was really funny. Like, I thought it was really fresh. Mm -hmm. I definitely, like, high, high recommendation. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, is the movie perfect? No, yeah. but like it's it's really strong. It's really great. I'm super interested in seeing what this director does next. Yeah, yeah. I she did this other film called Postgrad, where she wrote the script, but she didn't direct it. But the story behind this is that she wrote this script for Edge of Test Seventeen, sent it to James L. Brooks, who is a famous producer, like probably like one of the biggest fucking producers in the world right now in American cinema and TV, and he loved it and he produced it. So uh, that, you know, it's just like a beautiful story about that. But mm -hmm. I, I also want to say like the movie is also very much centered around depression. And like yeah. I really related to her character and they never really go full into like depression, like w like confront the issue. But um, there's a lot of absurd comedy. She's at one point says like mockingly calling the 911 and saying like my brother's touching me in my no-no. And it's like such like a really kind of like shocking thing it's like darkly comic but it's not something you would 
like normally say, but I know that there's people like that out there. And I, I've definitely been depressed enough to, to like form absurdist kind of humor like that before, but like, I never liked that, like that kind of sexual, but, um, but yeah, it was like a very nuanced moment and, uh, uh just, I uh, felt, um, yeah. Yeah, I what? mean, yeah, it was. I thought that joke was really funny, but when you bring it up, it's like yeah. the fact that she would go that far mm-hmm. does show that, like she's really fucking like she's feeling some intense shit yeah. right now. Like she's, you know, yeah, as you say, like she's going through a depressive episode. Yeah, you know? yeah. Matt Zoller cites uh, has some really great essays on um, Wes Anderson's work, and and one of the big things in like you know Moonrise Kingdom, he will say like, so do you have your parents? And then you know he like, Sam like just puts his head down he doesn't say anything and they just move on and the whole thing about Zoller Seitz would say is the Wes Anderson's character they they never confront the depression on point it's always just revolving around it a mm-hmm. little bit like all the characters are very sad and they have they're all like in the hole you know like everyone has like that depressive hole and like that's the thing with this movie the end does do it though and i do like it i think the perfect climax where she says and probably and Hailey steinfeld's performance here is fucking incredible mm-hmm. i love it yeah. so much but at the end where she says you know i i always feel like i'm just watching myself and and, and i see a terrible person and i don't like that person like i'm choking up right now just thinking about that but i do there's a review on letterboxd where where like some guy walked out of the theater and heard all these teenage girls say, I relate just to her character so much, like so much. I'm like, you know, I, it's so, it's so tough being a teenage girl. And I think Virgin Suicide showed that where, you know, but it, it always was like a little bit distant. And I feel like this film, like you really like feel everything that she feels and, uh, and can totally understand Man, there's so much I really want to talk about this film. I'm sorry. Do you have anything to say about those points? No, I, I think, like, I mean, I think you kind of covered it. Like, you really got, like, yeah. Yeah. There's a moment where she takes, like, the antidepressant and she says, oh, you just take it. You can just take it whenever. That is not true at all. <laughs> you take it, like, I, like, I, old medicine. yeah, yeah. And she just keeps, I mean, she might, oh, man, she might be hiding it from her mom and everything, but that totally explains her kind of mood swings and her, like, her, you know, problems and everything. It's just, uh, it's an unhealthy uh, way to go about things. I, I'd love, I, I could do a whole video essay about there's scenes. I, I, are you, we're fine. Oh, we're, I'm just keeping yeah, a yeah. watch on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're fine. Um, there's okay, scenes cool. where you see like her eyes move, like how she moves her eyes, you know, like to process thought. And I was mm. thinking during the film, I'm yeah. rambling a lot. I know, but like, no, the, no, no, I, I get you. No, no, no. She like, like she does a lot with her eyes, and mm-hmm. she does. I remember that. And like, she, the camera allows her to do that too. Mm-hmm. And and uh, you know, performance wise, like Cassavetes is, is is inspired. You know, where you can like they just allow the actor to act in this film. Um, but I think it's uh, the the true nature of a great performance is they can convey thought through like a look and yeah steinfeld does that so tremendously here it's it's just astounding she she was she was great Mm -hmm. just great flat out like i mean like really like uh and like the other like people in the movie like the other actors were Mm -hmm. all great too i like uh her guy friend the asian guy yeah yeah also hey asian male lead in cinema yeah exactly romantic lead too spoilers but whatever but yeah he um yeah i like that he is so he good, good. He's really funny <laughs> he does the perfect awkward uh when he announces his movie it's just like that could be an oscar clip to be honest <laughs> it's just so funny <laughs> and this man uh, yeah he he totally nails it mm. and there's also a moment where he hints at like a little depression where he says you know, like, yeah, she says, oh, my God, your parents are gone. And he's like, yeah, my parents are gone. You know, like, it's a very, like, quick little note. But it's like he does not – he misses – he wishes he has he, – He's been living alone for three months yeah. and hasn't told anyone. Yeah, exactly. In a giant house. Yeah, I mean, like, there's definitely, like – it was not, like – he wasn't happy. Like, there are a lot of people who be like, I've been alone, I've been alone yeah. for three months. And it's like he's like, I've, I, yeah, I've, I've been alone for three months, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah like it's he i i like that yeah it yeah it doesn't it it hints at at sad 
and depression. And the mom character is interesting. All the characters. Oh are... yeah, Kier, uh, Kier Cedric. Kier Cedric, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was great. Like she's really, I, I liked her character a lot mm-hmm. in it. I liked how they allowed all the characters to kind of like have their flaws mm-hmm. and like also not be like just flaws either. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, I, yeah, I'll go on. No, no, go. You go ahead. I've talked so much, Audrey, but I do love. I'll just say this, and I'll let you talk. When Kira Cedric does this with her arm, where she like she oh. like shows her arm flab, oh, yeah, I was like, was... I was almost shocked that they, in a way, because I know it's not like a a, a shot like a typically shocking thing, but for a woman actress to do that is this, you know, like kind of embrace really age. Funny. It was funny and it was beautiful and it was a sweet moment where I'm like, yeah, good for you, fucking Kira Cedric. Do that. I mean, like, it's that thing of, like, that's just how she looks. Like, yeah. there's nothing to be, like, any kind of ways about. Like, that's just, like, a lot of people have, like, a lot more, you know, upper arm fat than she does, you mm-hmm. know? And it's, like, that's just the way that people look. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I do appreciate that often. Uh, like, a lot of times, like... There's this, that movie a few years ago, and like I, I still love the movie, but I would still criticize it to this day. Mm-hmm. It's like the Fault in Our Stars type of thing, where it's like there are these two people. One of them had his leg cut off, and the other one like has this uh, nose thing around her. What movie is this? <laughs> Do you remember the, the Fault time? in Our Stars? Oh, Fault in Our Stars. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. And, I thought, <laughs> and it's that thing of like they're yeah. like we're so ugly, and I'm like, you two are some of the most gorgeous people who have ever lived. So you could just go take that, like, yeah, go like exactly. fuck yourself. Like I yeah. get that it's like the characters feel mm-hmm. ugly, and mm-hmm. that I'm sure in the books were uglier than these actors. Yeah, but it's like when you have actors that are like like bitching about that, I'm just kind of like that's a little outrageous. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, it's. So it's like when Kira Sedgwick is like that, it's just like that. She doesn't even look like any kind of ways, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like that's abnormal or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. I I could talk about this movie for like 10 more years, I think. But it's it's awesome. It's really fucking good. Like really solid work. mm -hmm. Uh, I think everyone out should just go see it. Like it's really fun. Yeah. Good movie. Yeah. I the maybe another one complaint I'll have is it's not very. A vi- it's not a really great visual movie. I mean, she could definitely improve it a little bit in cinematography. But, I mean, sure. that's something you really have to finesse because she's an actor-director like Cassavetes. Cassavetes somehow got striking. And I do compare – I mean, I'm, I'm – fuck. I'm, I'll definitely compare her to Cassavetes for that. For, like, just – she allows her actors to act, but she still could, you know, be a little better with, like, certain visuals and everything cool yeah. i do love the one visual joke where like the guy pulls up to the waist you know what i'm talking about oh they pull, yeah and she looks <laughs> it's such, such a hilarious i remember like pulling up going to different places with girls <laughs> and like just the worst places to like <laughs> have sex or you know whatever um yeah so yeah, that was amazing that was a really funny moment. yeah <laughs> she's like oh what a nice like she looks over at the river and shit and she's yeah. like nope yeah yeah not nothing like that and it, it, it's also noted on like the different podcasts but he she said no and he stopped and that's like a another great little moment like just a hidden little millennial moment there was no it was like yeah you can be a douchebag but you could you should stop you know if she says no you know like he, he, you totally understand where he comes from too he's like i thought you wanted to fucking you know hook up you know you didn't think that ensured dif- differing expectations it really kind of humanized both characters in that sense even though he's kind of scum but he you know he's still he's just a horny teenager you know? yeah it's totally. just like a movie that just is so awesome i could see it again to be honest i probably will um <laughs> yeah like i uh i think I think we pretty much said everything. Yeah, I said, I, everything, I said right? everything for sure. Do you have anything else to say? No, I don't really have anything. I, I just really liked uh, her work. I thought it was a strong, strong movie. You know, like uh, I, I, I want to see more. Mm-hmm. I want right. to see more from this director. Yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, the, I want. I guess we should close out the show now. Or? Yeah. So thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, there's that 52 women uh, thing. I oh really my god, just, uh, we look. should totally. We have to talk about. Okay. That. Cool. Okay, so I believe it's women in film. Mm-hmm. They have a challenge. Watch 52 uh, women-directed movies a year for one year. Like, watch one movie directed by a woman per week. Mm-hmm. And it's a great challenge, and I think we're going to do it. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to do the challenge, and we're going to watch one. Um, so we're going to have a new segment where we talk about our women in film 
pick, pick of the week. Yeah, exactly. And we'll, we're, I think we're just going to go full on to reviews unless there's any news, like significant news. Sadly, there's not a lot of significant news for film, uh, women in film stuff. So, yeah, I think that's uh, we will we'll just keep uh, head, you know, heading forward, like just like seeing more and more movies mm-hmm. directed by women. Yes, exactly. So, um, yes. Uh, thank you for listening. My name is William Evans. My name is Audrey Best. And this is the Alice Gay Blachet, Alice Gay Blachet Show. Say that five times fast. Uh, Alice Gay Blachet Show. Yeah. Alice Gay Blachet Show. Alice Gay Blachet Show. All right. See you later. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>